Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. Now, this is the second episode in a series of three on beta oxidation. In this episode, I will be focusing on how the term beta oxidation was derived, provide a comprehensive account of the four steps involved within each beta oxidation cycle, and explain how specific coenzymes are involved and the steps they appear within each cycle. Finally, I'll be providing a summary table of the key points from this presentation to help you bring this all together. Okay, let's get started. For simplicity's sake, I'll be using a saturated fatty acid that has only eight carbons as our example, which I will be referring to as a C8 fatty acid. Let us begin with a quick illustration representing this C8 fatty acid. You will see that it's made up of two segments. The fatty acid segment on the left, known as an acyl group, which is attached to the coenzyme A segment on the right. Now, fatty acids cannot undergo beta oxidation unless they have this coenzyme A segment attached to the end of their chain. In order for this to occur, they need to undergo a process known as activation, which I have already covered in a previous episode titled fatty acid transport. For now, however, let's focus on the objective. why is this process called beta oxidation? In order to answer this question, I need to label the carbons on the left of the carbonyl functional group. The closest carbon to this functional group is designated alpha, while the second closest is labeled the beta carbon. Now, beta oxidation involves cleavage and removal of the acetyl group unit to the right of the beta carbon. This occurs through a series of oxidation reactions, hence the term beta oxidation. Now, each beta oxidation cycle is made up of four separate steps. The first step involves the removal of the circled hydrogen atoms on the beta and alpha carbons. This results in the formation of the following compound. Note how the removal of the hydrogen atoms from the beta and alpha carbons results in the formation of a double bond and the creation of an alkene. This first step is considered an oxidation reaction as hydrogen atoms are removed from the fatty acid. Recall how the loss of hydrogen is considered oxidation. Now, each of these hydrogen atoms contains a high energy electron. Now, I'll be talking more about the relevance of these later in the presentation. Now, these hydrogen atoms and their high energy electrons are accepted by coenzyme FAD, resulting in its reduction to FADH2. Recall how the gain of hydrogen or electrons is termed reduction. So in short, FAD has been reduced by gaining two hydrogens, while the fatty acid has been oxidized by losing two hydrogens. It is important to always focus on what is happening to the fatty acid during the steps of beta oxidation. So when a step such as the one we have just covered states that it's an oxidation reaction, it is making a specific and concrete reference to the fatty acid and not the coenzyme. The next step involves the addition of water across the newly formed double bond. Illustrated here, the water molecule splits into an OH group, which subsequently attaches to the beta carbon, while the remaining hydrogen atom attaches to the alpha carbon. This whole process results in the removal of the double bond, resulting in the production of a secondary alcohol. So in summary, this second step involves the addition of water, typically referred to as a hydration reaction, resulting in the production of a secondary alcohol. This lays the foundation for the next step, which involves the removal of hydrogen from the OH group, in addition to a second hydrogen atom attached below the beta carbon. The removal of these hydrogens results in the oxidation of the secondary alcohol to give a ketone.
The coenzyme NAD plus is responsible for this oxidation as it accepts the hydrogen from the beta carbon in the form of a negatively charged hydride ion to become reduced NADH. Some of you might be thinking why the hydrogen that breaks away from the beta carbon and has a single negative charge. Well, when the hydrogen in this illustration breaks away from its attached carbon atom, it takes both electrons that were used to form the covalent bond. That is to say, its own electron plus the one it was sharing with carbon. Hydrogen has a single proton within its nucleus, which cancels the charge from one of these electrons. Hence the single negative charge. This hydride ion and its two electrons are then taken up by NAD plus to give NADH. Note how these two electrons that are accepted by NAD plus are also considered to be high energy electrons. Now while this is occurring, hydrogen within the OH functional group breaks away from the oxygen atom to form something that you're probably more familiar with a single H plus ion, also known as a proton. So in summary, step three, we have a second oxidation reaction that involves the production of a ketone from a secondary alcohol and is facilitated by NAD plus, which is reduced to give NADH while also generating a single proton. During the fourth and final step, a two carbon acetyl segment is cleaved away from the ketone. Cleavage occurs between the beta and alpha carbons in the presence of coenzyme A, represented as HS-CoA, in this illustration. I would like now for you to focus on the terminal hydrogen atom within the HS-CoA molecule. It is this terminal hydrogen that is used to complete the formation of the single unit of acetyl-CoA by attaching to the alpha carbon of the ketone during cleavage. The removal of this two carbon acetyl CoA segment during the fourth step of beta oxidation reduces the length of the carbon chain from eight carbons to six. The six carbon fatty acid fragment then combines with the S CoA fragment to form a six carbon fatty acyl CoA product. Now the cycle repeats again, undergoing the same steps in the same sequence. Oxidation. Hydration, oxidation again, and finally cleavage. Note how in some textbooks this fourth step is referred to as thiolysis. This results in the production of another acetyl CoA in addition to the four carbon fatty acyl CoA product. The cycle repeats again, undergoing the same steps in the same sequence. This results in the production of two acetyl CoA's. Here is a quick summary table of the products from the beta oxidation of a C8 saturated fatty acid. During the first cycle, one acetyl CoA is produced with one FADH2 and one NADH. During the second cycle, one acetyl CoA is produced with one FADH2 and one NADH. And during the final cycle, we produce two acetyl-CoAs, one FADH2 and one NADH. So in total, the number of acetyl-CoAs produced from the complete beta oxidation of a C8 fatty acid is four, while the number of FADHs produced is three, and the number of NADHs produced is three as well. In addition, here is a summary table of the key points from each step of each beta oxidation cycle. During step one, we have oxidation in which two hydrogens are removed from the fatty acid chain by FAD. This results in the production of an alkene and a reduced coenzyme FADH2. During step two, we have a hydration reaction in which water is added across the double bond, resulting in the production of a secondary alcohol. During step three, we have an oxidation reaction in which the secondary alcohol is oxidized by NAD plus to give a ketone. NAD plus is subsequently reduced to give NADH. We also produce a single proton. And finally, during step number four, we have cleavage, also known as thiolysis, 
in which we produce a single acid alcoa resulting in a reduction in the carbon chain by two carbons. While this holds true for most of the cycles of beta oxidation involved in the fourth step, the final cycle produces two acid alcoas as opposed to just the one. In my next episode, I'll be looking at the links between the products of beta oxidation and other metabolic pathways. I'll also be providing you with a list of specially designed questions to help you consolidate the information delivered from all three episodes. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening. <laughs>